Greetings, gentlemen. The first and main point I want to make is that we're driving a Lambo, specifically the Urus, which is Lambo's first SUV. And renting one of these, yes, this is a rental, will cost you a small fortune. Even for just one day. It all seemed pretty pointless to me. I thought that nobody would be interested in renting the thing. Regardless, I still agreed to do a review on this Urus. And then I was told that today is actually the only day I can come and do some filming. Because for the next two weeks after, this thing is completely booked out. So even I had to wait in line for a bit to film a review on this car. And after me, another 14 people are willing to spend a crazy amount of money. And all for the privilege of being able to drive around in this Lambo for an entire day. I mean, seriously, what? Why is this Urus in such high demand? How did this car do that? What drives people to spend that kind of money on renting or maybe even buying one of these? I mean, this is a $300,000 car. And why am I so mad despite just having gotten into the driver's seat? Okay, today we're gonna be test driving a frickin' Lamborghini Urus. My god, we just did 3.7, 3.7. So this car obviously gets you all hyped up and excited, but you're still aware of the conditions when this car will eat you alive. I mean, even when you're prepared to do a hard launch, and you know that you'll be going very fast, this thing surpasses your expectations by a huge margin. But then you get out of the car and have a look, and suddenly you're like, wait a second, hang on, is this a blank panel? So there is no adaptive cruise control in this thing? Then you take a close look at this area, and you realize that it's apparently lacking a head-up display. Okay, so what exactly do I get for my 300 grand? I mean, yeah, okay, it is riding on airbags, which is nice, but it doesn't have soft closed doors, and as for the door handles themselves, despite this being a Lambo, it comes with some generic looking door handles. They don't pop out, they're not flush with the doors, so none of the high-end stuff that you expect from a car at this price point. That there is something you get on a Volkswagen. I'm guessing that if we open the hood, it might say made in Germany. I had no idea that that's what the German flag looks like. Granted, they could have been conquered by someone in recent years, by someone else who decided to act on our We Can Do It Again slogan. Well, there you go. The point is that when you take a closer look at this car, you start to realize that the money has been spent on not what you expected. So from the looks of it, the money has gone... It looks like they took one thing, at its respective cost, then on top of that they put the full retail price of that into this, and now here we are looking at some sort of Lamborghini-Volkswagen hybrid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Coming in, yeah, flex. I just wanna win, yeah L.A.B.B. who we running with, yeah 2 2 three, three, I'm on 10 again, yeah State your name, big been dope on flame I just switched the lanes, damn he did it again I just flipped the pain, stripping and dipping in bass Slab on everything, swimming you sinking away Cause I got big racks coming, I put my low racks on it I ain't skip past losses, I had to get back off it See the fit lab on it until they whip my coffin Money clip I tossed it, I heard it's big bags on big bags on big bags. So is there any Lamborghini left in here? Well, that would obviously be almost everything that surrounds you in the cabin. Including these confusing controls for the transmission. I mean, we all know that Lambos were always a bit off in that regard, with their flappy paddle gearboxes. It's all a bit weird. I mean, you have to engage reverse like so, while putting it into drive involves pulling the paddle on the right to get it into first gear. It'll even start moving when you release the brake pedal. You have a separate button for neutral, while the start-stop button is sitting beneath this cover, in keeping with the aviation theme. Right here on the left we have a drive mode selector, which makes an unpleasant clicking noise when you move it around. That's just unacceptable. We actually have another lever on the right, which is meant to adjust this car's custom settings. They call it Ego Mode. 
and it lets you configure the systems any way you like. It allows you to individually adjust the steering, the suspension, the shock absorbers, and the all-wheel drive system. And it's not just soft or stiff, you can also choose something in between. Meaning that if you were to do an acceleration test, you can set the suspension to soft while sharpening the steering and fully locking the center diff. You can obviously reconfigure all of that for the track or what have you. And straight away I am extremely annoyed by the fact that there are blank switches in this interior. I mean, if you're making a car of this caliber, Perhaps it would make sense to craft an interior that doesn't have any blank switches at all. They find a way to do that in cheaper cars, but here for whatever reason they didn't. I mean, this thing even has close relatives which don't have blank switches in the cabin. Then again, on the plus side, that actually makes this car authentic. This Lambo doesn't borrow anything from Audis, Volkswagens or Skodas, or from Porsches for that matter. This is a true Lambo, in that it uses its very own switchgear and trim pieces. They did their very best to set it apart, to produce a quality product which makes you feel good while driving it. This truly is an exclusive automobile. And that's good. The seats, the color palette, this crazy looking dashboard. Obviously the screen looks like it was pulled straight from a Cayenne, but don't all screens sort of look alike? I really don't see anything wrong with a screen looking like a screen. And what's most important, I don't want to dwell on it, but bear with me for five seconds. So when you're driving around in this car like you would every day with all of the systems in their default setting, Lamborghini calls it Strata, which is basically comfort mode. Anyway, it drives like a Cayenne. The only real difference being that this particular Cayenne is riding on 22-inch rims, and you can feel it. A normal Cayenne comes with 20s while here you get 22s, since these enormous carbon ceramics just wouldn't fit inside 20-inch rims. So these wheels aren't for show, it actually needs them. And so now if I were to close my eyes, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference from a Cayenne. But right now we're leaving the tunnel, my eyes are open again, and I can clearly see that I'm driving around in a Lambo. This is awesome. This is truly incredible. Yes, I did give the Huracan some flack for being cramped, for it being hot and uncomfortable inside. I mean, yeah, this car might have lost the charm of those proper Lambos, which used to be uncompromising, wild, harsh and vicious. They were always ready to destroy anything that got in their way, and it was literally impossible to go for a relaxed drive in those Lambos. What was cool about them is that, just like this one, you could pull both paddles and you're in neutral. Though there is no exhaust crackle, given that we are in comfort mode, but if we put it into Corsa, let's get it into neutral. Okay, so the sound is now coming from somewhere up front. Right, you can't engage reverse while moving. Well, at least that one, okay. You can hear the sound coming from up front. Seriously, listen. Granted, the exhaust note also changes. You even get a few extra pops and bangs. But the engine noise is actually fake. It's artificially pumping noise into the cabin. You know what? I'd much rather put it in strata mode and just chill out. It's important to note that, unlike other Lambos, this thing has an off-road setting. Seriously, off-road. Which brings up the ride height, and by a serious margin. Unlike the Huracan. I have zero gripes about the suspension travel in this one. I see we go find ourselves some kind of trail. And find out what this car is capable of. Right, there's still the matter of making it to the trail. Is there anything in here that could help with that? First off, we should move the gear selector into off-road mode. That's quite obvious. I see we turn it up a notch. We'll start with the default settings and drive on a rough dirt road. This is something a villager like myself deals with every day. So will this car work for me? I wouldn't even dream about driving here in a normal Lambo such as a Huracan or an Aventador. Right now I'm doing 20 k's an hour, we've got some bumps, it isn't unbearable, and keep in mind that it's riding on some 22-inch wheels. So up ahead we've got a Škoda Octavia, let's try catching up to it. We're not experiencing any trouble at all. And that's nice. I like that. I doubt that it has any more in it, or that it can easily drive on snow, for example. Or that it can tackle diagonal obstacles. It doesn't have proper locking diffs, after all. But while I'm driving over this bumpy dirt road, my voice isn't even trembling. That car driving ahead of us is literally jumping up and down. And he's definitely not going any faster than he is already. 
And here we are moving with the wheels straight and not working around any of the bumps. I approve. Okay, so we're in some serious trouble. This Lambo is now up against some pretty harsh off-road conditions. It might be over for us. Now there's the matter of jacking the suspension up as high as possible. You can actually see it lifting. The difference is actually quite dramatic. We've even got some sensors which keep track of both pitch and roll. Let's find out if the locking diffs work. Okay, now we put it into first, which immediately leads to engaging second gear. And we're off. This is actually quite inconvenient, since even when I lean out of the window like this, I can't tell where the front wheel is, meaning that ideally I have to pull off this number and use my toes to press the pedals. But this way I can barely even reach the gas. Oh my god! Can the bumper clear that concrete slab? What's up? We looking good? Wow, now this is dangerous. Which way should I turn the wheel? Left, right, left? So that the wheel lodges itself straight into that rock? I can feel... This is just too rough. Okay, diagonal test time. Will the wheels hang up in the air? The rocker panels are good. This seems a bit too rough. Easy. Oh my god. We actually made it? We made it! Yes! We just dabbled in a bit of off-roading. Yes! This Lambo is worth something after all. We did okay. Wait a second, what about the exhaust? Okay, so we've now proven that this car can handle absolutely anything you throw at it. My god, this is a lovely vehicle. Though we didn't go any further than getting the tires dirty. So we took our friend Eugene along for the ride, who sells parts at VAG Center. So he gave us an estimate on the cost of these carbon ceramic rotors, and they go for about $4,000 a piece. You see, the thing with these brake discs is that if you hit a small stone, it might get stuck between the rotor and the brake pads, and even fracture the brake discs. It turns out that they don't handle mechanical stress all that well. Our drive on that dirt road was cut short just in time by Eugene, who was literally yelling. Like, dude, that could easily cost you 16 grand. And that's just the wholesale price. These are, in fact, the largest carbon ceramic brakes that have ever been fitted to a production car. You can't replace them with brakes from an RS7. There's really no cheap way to replace them, period. This here is a very effective and bespoke engineering solution which costs a shit ton of money. So even if this car is able to show some off-road ability, it's just not worth the risk. So we decided to quit while we're ahead, otherwise we might lose a fortune. What's amazing is that this thing has a trunk. You might think that a Lambo doesn't need one, but it's there. Which is actually quite appropriate considering that this car already has a second row of seats and a second pair of doors. Not to mention that off-road setting. So this is obviously a car that you'd use for everyday driving. There are two quirks in here that are worth noting. First off, we have more than 600 liters of trunk space. So yeah, this is actually a proper trunk. Actually, make that three quirks. So up here we have this little niche, which, surprisingly enough, is hiding an emergency warning triangle. It says Volkswagen Audi on it, which I'm sure is a coincidence. But that's not all. Down here underneath the load floor we have a tray for the space saver which has its own little slot which you can use to store another emergency triangle that says Volkswagen Audi on it. So apparently they give you two of these just in case one doesn't do it for you. You can literally surround yourself with triangles and put on a show, I guess. Also bear in mind that this is a utility vehicle, and that means you get a button for lowering the load floor. In other words, you can bring the tail down if you want to load the trunk with some potatoes. Also, we've got a blank switch in here, which isn't great, of course, but at the same time it's sort of okay, since apparently this is where the electric tow hitch release is supposed to live. I actually looked this up on Google, and you can indeed get this thing fitted with a tow hitch, meaning you can have a Lambo with a tow hitch, so that you can transport your shit around in an old, rusted out trailer. This car is perfect. I love it.
As you might imagine, this Lambo wasn't made to go off-road. The airlift system is their way of making a compromise, as in special for us, the people who were talking smack about the Huracan. They developed a crossover SUV for us to comfortably drive around in every day, so that we needn't worry about speed bumps and drive without a care in the world. Whatever the case may be, this is a Lambo, and where it truly feels at home is on the highway. Everything in here is geared towards use on the highway. This thing has got some next-level acceleration. It's impossible to just cruise around in this one. And the brakes are phenomenal. This has a monstrous amount of stopping power. Please let me through. There we go. Awesome. And it bangs off the limiter in manual shift mode. Perfect. This is awesome. Whoa, we're carrying so much speed that my ears just popped. We just drove onto that overpass so fast that my ears popped due to the elevation change. This is incredible. Absolutely incredible. This is one tremendously fast SUV. It's obviously not as comfortable as some other crossovers, but it is fast. It's always your call, whether you want speed or comfort. Then again, you can always do this. And the car goes quiet. Now we're just driving along in silence. And you really need to commit if you want this car to accelerate. This is interesting. Curious. How long does switching your drive mode take? It does it immediately. No delay whatsoever. And it takes a split second. Stay out of the left lane, brother. This is incredible. Now if I just... It goes into comfort mode without even a second thought. This car is lacking some buttons on the steering wheel, which I hear are all the rage nowadays. The sort of ones you press while driving in comfort mode if you want to go a bit crazy, as if you are flipping on the hyperdrive or something. Here you do have to move a selector, but the switch is instantaneous. So yeah, I don't have a button on the wheel, but I don't really mind. I really like how it drives on the highway. Meanwhile, does this thing have a back seat? Yes, it does. Does that back seat have cup holders? Yeah. Can I put my kids back there? Sure I can. And can I do some utterly dangerous driving in my kids' absence? Yes. So with that, we've established that this thing is an ideal Lambo, in my humble opinion. It won me over not so much because it goes fast, but because you can easily use it as your daily. When I'm evaluating a car, my main focus is always its everyday usability, as in can I drive it for 150 to 200 kilometers every day, while running errands and maybe even filming some videos. Can I load some skis into the trunk, go buy some baseboards and bring them home, and maybe even put some cement into the cargo area? Yeah, this Lambo is more than up to it. That's crazy! This is the single most unusual Lambo that I've ever encountered, and it still feels like a Lambo, since you can... This thing is so fast, I mean, oh my god. You really need to prepare yourself for how fast this car goes. It is seriously quick, and the way it handles lateral Gs, this is great. I can maneuver... Oh wow, the way it reacts to steering input. I remember saying in my previous video that you can do this with the steering wheel. But in this car, that's just outright dangerous. Oh look, a lot of 2114. And he wants to race. You should stay away from people who drive that sort of car. Oh, wow. Far out. I love this thing. Granted, it's not perfect. It doesn't have an air purifier. And you don't get a built-in scented air freshener. Again, there's a ton of blank switches in here. But who cares? If you're looking for a daily driver that can do this... I'm not aware of any other car that's this good and has this sort of crazy styling. Even if we're calling this a glorified Cayenne. And to me, that's basically this car in a nutshell. You really can't get away from the fact that they share a common platform. Meaning this chassis isn't Lambo, but rather a Volkswagen Audi Porsche one. Might I add that if you've driven those cars before, you'll find this one very familiar. Then again, this is a Cayenne's evolutionary peak right here, with a Lambo exterior that everybody wants a piece of. And that works regardless whether the engine is on or off, or whether the car is moving or stationary. It doesn't matter, it's a Lambo. Anybody who has a Cayenne or a Lambo parked in front of them will always go for the Lambo. 
And let's not forget that this thing is authentic. It doesn't share any parts with the Cayenne. Well, any immediately obvious ones, anyway. And I'm not even a Lambo guy. While I was on my way to film, I was prepared to rip on this thing. I mean, for God's sake, you don't even get adaptive cruise control for 300 grand. If I were to activate the cruise control and just sit back and do nothing, we'd smash that Solaris that's driving in front of us. And do we really want to deal with that? This kind of money doesn't even buy you a head-up display. I mean, seriously? Then again, you can get them as extras. So all of that stuff is available, if you are willing to spend a bit more money. I mean, let's face it, if you've got 300 grand for the car, a couple of thousand for options is really no big deal. And let's not forget that we've got those carbon ceramics. And it's a Lambo. There's a lot to talk about here on the move. But as a matter of fact, this thing has so much grunt that you can even feel it on the steering wheel. Incredible stuff. The acceleration is just epic, and the way it responds to steering input is absolutely phenomenal. It's so precise. This is incredible. I'd happily take this thing to the racetrack, but that goes against the rental agreement. So when we filmed that 911, we asked for permission to take it to the track, and they kindly agreed to let us do it. As for this Lambo, that wasn't part of the deal. And it just begs you to take it to the track. Normally an SUV on a track would be just ridiculous, but this one? I'll go out on a limb and say that this might be the exception. Now I put it back into comfort mode. This is nice. Alright, gentlemen, so at first this car seemed like something I wouldn't really care for. I was thinking to myself, okay, so it's a crossover from Lamborghini. And crossovers are slow and cumbersome, not to mention heavy, with a factory rating of about 2.2 metric tons in this case. The power figure is on par with my Range Rover, I really didn't see how it could surprise me. But as it turns out, there are plenty of different ways to put power to the ground. There's a bunch of cars out there with 650 horsepower and beyond, but you won't find a faster crossover than this. The engineers managed to implant a Cayenne into this body shape and uh, merge it with Lamborghini's own design philosophy. I reckon I should probably alternate, calling it either a Lamborghini or a Lamborghini, just to piss off as many people as I can. I guess that's the way to go, given that this isn't a true Lamborghini per se. And at the same time, it's evolved beyond being a Cayenne. Then again, if this dope exterior and a ton of love from everybody around you is what you're after, you should get yourself one of these. I actually get why people buy these. And now I even understand why you'd want to rent a car like this. You might think that it's pointless spending so much money just to drive around in this thing. But there's really nothing else like it in the world of cars. You can even fit a tow hitch in the back. I mean, you can transport all of your manure in this Lambo, all the way from Grandma's village to your very own garden. And all thanks to Daydream Rentals. I think I found an elegant way to do that plug. Yeah, I'm guessing that should work okay. And of course, big thanks to Miroslava. Everybody loves Miroslava. She's all anybody ever discusses in the comments. Seriously, what would we do without you? Did you like it? We'd have to use the Range Rover to transport manure, which is totally inappropriate. But this thing, I didn't just like it. This totally shifted my perspective on the Urus. On paper, I thought it was rubbish. But you really need to take it for a drive to truly appreciate what it's capable of. The brakes on this thing, the gearbox, and the motor are just next level. The same can be said about the rental company that lends this monster out to people. For some reason, this car is booked out for the next two weeks. For the same money, you can buy yourself several cars. Sure. People keep asking why we decided to get one. Yeah, you could buy yourself an entire fleet of Lottas and use them as taxi cabs. Yeah, you could have bought a huge fleet of cheaper cars. Plus, you could have given them all away on your Instagram page. 
that didn't occur to us. Literally smother yourself with money. So this is one of those cars you don't even have the right to judge unless you've driven one and experienced how awesome it is. Big thanks for watching this video. Big thanks to daydream.ru and hopefully we see some more wild stuff in your fleet soon. Only time will tell. Maybe next year. And we'll be waiting to do another test drive. Okay, good luck to all of you. Big thanks for watching this video. And goodbye. Bye. This is the part where we're supposed to split up. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian.